Hi, Meredith here. My kids and I just finished a homeschool unit study on prehistory. We started with the Big Bang and went through the beginnings of agriculture. Um, and we did this over the course of almost three months. Uh, the really fun thing about a unit study is you can dive as deep into topics as you want to. So my kids were really excited about dinosaurs. So we spent two whole weeks just doing the dinosaurs, or if dinosaurs aren't an interest from your kids, you can spend three days doing dinosaurs and move on. I'm usually not using a set curriculum for homeschool, especially for unit studies. We do use like a math curriculum and a reading curriculum separately, but for unit studies, for language arts, for um, science. I am usually putting together collections of resources and activities on my own. I've just found that that works better for me. I don't really like it when a book is telling me what to do all the time, so I like to put together my own things. Um, and if you follow my channel, you know that I really love books, so usually things are literature-based, um, book-based, and how we approach things, so I thought I would share uh, my favorite books that we used to do this unit study. And these are most of the resources that we used. We added in some craft projects and things like that, but most of all, we learned through these books. So uh, I'll share those with you today. So my favorite history and prehistory resource is this amazing encyclopedia that we have. It's the Usborne Encyclopedia of World History. Um, what's really cool about this book is that every single spread of pages has internet links that go with them um, that have already been kind of screened and picked out for you. So, uh, you know, you can read the page and then you hop on your, your tablet and you can watch YouTube videos and explore links associated with that topic. It's such a great way to dive farther into the topic and explore it in uh, more ways than just through the text. So I'm gonna flip through this book just through the prehistory section a little bit so you can get an idea of what's in there. Pretty cool, right? My uh, my kids and I all love this book and have a lot of fun doing the links. So I highly recommend this one and it can guide you all the way through prehistory. And then after that, if you are enjoying it and wanna do more history. So another one that you can uh, use for prehistory and keep going is this one, E.H. Gombrich, A Little History of the World. This is uh, history told in a narrative form. This book is actually quite old. I think it was published in the 30s, but it has since been updated. Um, and just the writing is so nice and um, well done. And if you are sort of an old fashion book kind of person, um, I think you'll like this one a lot. I like how this one for the first chapter, it really goes into what is history? How do we know what we know what does storytelling have to do with history, um, which is a nice contemplative piece to begin um, your history studies with. Um, and if your kids are older, I think this would be a nice one to just hand to them and have them read on their own. I've only read the first two chapters of this actually because uh, chapter three is when you've reached the Egyptians and we haven't gotten quite that far in our history studies yet. So um, I can't, you know, say with confidence about the rest of the book, but it is off to a good start, I think. And uh, we enjoy the, reading the first two chapters as a read aloud. So for unit study two, you can pause and dive into a topic a little deeper. Everything doesn't have to just keep moving chronologically forward every day. So when we were doing early earth, we took some time to learn about rocks because um, it's important in understanding the formation of the earth and also in the age of the earth 
and also later on how fossils fit into that. Um, so we spent a few days doing some rock activities and um, we used this Let's Go rock collecting. Sometimes they, when you look at the cover, you think it's gonna be a little bit um, childish or just for preschoolers. To actually dive in, there is a lot of really good information in these science books. I really like this series. It's the Let's Read and Find Out Science series. I have a number of books from this series and this is a great one. And so we, we read this and a couple other rock books and then uh, went out rock collecting and tried to identify the rocks that we found. Well, then after you have moved into uh, life on Earth, you can start to learn more about fossils. Uh, we got this DK Eyewitness Fossil Book. These are always filled with great images and really nice uh, to just set out on your coffee table um, or homeschool table for the kids just to pick up and look at. They're not really one that you want to sit and read out loud, um, but have just incredible images and are a really good way for kids to sit and explore a topic on their own. And if you have pre-readers in your house and you want to do reading time, you know, silent reading time. This is, you know, the kind of book they can sit and flip through. So really cool. So when you're learning about fossils, another book I really love is When Sue Found Sue. Uh, this is one of my favorite children's books. I've talked about it on my channel before. Um, and it tells the story of Sue Henderson, who, uh, discovered the largest, most complete T-Rex fossil um, ever discovered. It's called Sue, and now it is in the um, Field Museum in Chicago. And my kids and I went there to see it uh, a year ago. Um, and whenever I read this book to my kids, somebody always uh, afterwards goes outside and starts to look for treasures. So I love how um, inspirational it is and uh, a real delight. So when Sue found Sue. Uh, then moving on to dinosaurs, there are so many great dinosaur books out there that um, it's hard to recommend just a few. Um, I'll show you a few that we have in our collection. Um, here's another one of those DK books. You can see ours has been well loved. The cover is no longer attached. Um, and this one just has these amazing computer generated images. Um, and this has been flipped through by my kids many times and pictures have been drawn out of it. And um, my son, my oldest son particularly loves how there's these size comparisons for everyone. So you can really get a sense of how big or tiny some of the dinosaurs are. So this is the DK, or this is, is the DK Smithsonian dinosaur book with no cover. Okay, so if we leave the dinosaurs behind and move on to the age of mammals um, and the rise of humans, uh, I really love this book, When We Became Humans by Michael Bright. Um, this one has really great illustrations and it starts out sort of how do we classify um, what sort of uh, small mammals are our really ancient ancestors and moving through primates. We have uh, Artipithecus and then moving forward to Homo habilis, fire, Here's, we have some um, skeletal uh, comparisons. So we see Australopithecus, Homo erectus, Homo sapien, and then um, Heidelberg and Neanderthals. So this one um, was is particularly, oh. and then we just have the story of early humans. So 
we have Homo sapiens and their journey um, out of Africa, their inventions of tools, um, agriculture, uh, and even into the first cities, domestication of dogs, um, art. So this, I love this book. Um, Early humans, human evolution is a particular interest of mine. I majored in anthropology in college just because this stuff fascinated me so much. Um, so, and I think this book is brilliantly done and both the writings and illustrations are really top notch. So when we became humans. Um, so then with the introduction of humans, you can also spend some time digging into uh, archeology span and how archeology span works um, because archeology, span unlike paleontology specifically deals with humans, human remains, human artifacts. Um, so this is another one of those, let's read and find out science books. Um, and this one takes you to an archeological dig and really uh, closely goes through how it works. Um, and my kids love the sort of comic style uh, way that the story is told with the speech bubbles. Um, and we have read this book uh, a bunch of times because everybody finds it interesting and you learn a lot, but it's a lot of fun to read. And it's another one that will make your kids want to go outside and uh, put together an archaeological dig. So that's Archaeologist Dig for Clues. My kids were really interested in the Ice Age, so we spent quite a lot of time with the Ice Age too. Um, we have this uh, prehistoric mammals book. Um, my kids really like the uh, Mastodon and Smilodon. Um, and what's fun is there are so many prehistoric animals that I didn't know about until we did this. Um, we have Indricotherium, some sea ones. So this was a lot of fun. Um, and then we also did this, what was the Ice Age um, book, this part of that Who, um, What series. And what we haven't done too many of these, but what I didn't realize was how um, well illustrated these are two. Um, there's illustrations on every page and again uh, it talks about the Ice Age in a more narrative way. Um, so my kids enjoyed this a lot. Oh and it has some photographs too uh, in the middle. So that was a good one for studying the Ice Age. Who, what was the Ice Age? Uh, another topic uh, we really loved learning about was um, early art and cave art and there are quite a few picture books on this topic and my favorite we checked out like four from the library and my favorite was this one discovery in the cave and this one tells the story of the discovery of the Lascaux cave in France um, and it was discovered during World War II by a boy um, and he showed it to his friends and they explored it and then shared it eventually with a scholar and the um, the art inside of this cave is absolutely amazing and a spellbinding story. Um, of both its creation and its rediscovery. So, discovery in the cave. And then for kids a little bit younger um, that uh, might find the discovery in the cave a bit long, there is this one, the first drawing. And this tells the story of a young prehistoric boy who has imagination and can see things that sort of no one else can see. You can see things in the shadows and the shapes um, of the stone in the cave. And he eventually makes the first cave art um, and then inspires 
his family group or tribe to um, make art themselves. So it's the beginning of art, the first drawing. Okay, just two more. Um, the last two are both ones that span from prehistory into historic times. Um, so you would just use a little bit of them now, but if you're gonna continue with your study of history, um, you could use them more in the future. Um, one is When on Earth. This shows historical um, events uh, and places mapped out. Um, so here we have human, so for prehistory, here we have human migration out of Africa and Ice Age animals. And you can see the glaciers coming down into Europe and North America. We have cave art locations around the world, the rise of agriculture around the world, and megaliths like Stonehenge. So that one continues, of course, through history. So you can look at um, maps of the Roman Empire and maps of World War II and so on. So that one will serve you well all throughout your history studies. And another one that spans um, from prehistory to the modern age is A Child Through Time. This is like a sort of a companion piece to children just like me, if you're familiar with that one. Rather than just focusing on children from different places, it's showing children from different places and from different times. So there was really only one prehistory for this, which is Taya. You can see she's a Stone Age uh, girl. Um, but um, if you're going to continue, you can go into Amala from the Indus Valley. Here we have, and it has little sections throughout with child toys. Here we have a boy from ancient Egypt. So we'll go all the way through to World War II with Susan. A child through time. So I hope you found this video helpful and some of these books are what you lo are looking for. Um, I have put links all below here. Um, if you use those links, you'll pay the same amount for the books, but it will help support uh, my YouTube channel. So take a look at those. And um, if you have any questions or need further recommendations, uh, be sure to uh, ask a question down below in the comments and I will try to answer those. Thanks.